Spiky bits. All right, today we're taking a look at Imperial Armor 12, The Fall of Orpheus. And I have to admit, it's a, it's a pretty pretty nice book. Um, I think it makes a, definitely a welcome addition to the Imperial Armor line with, uh, you know, there hasn't been a lot of Necron or Dark Eldar uh, models out there for a long time, and this was kind of nice to come along and kind of tie everything together in, uh, as far as Necrons, get some new, some new models and everything, because they are a, a very popular line now. It also introduced uh, new rules for the Minotaurs chapter, as well as the Death Corps of Krieg, which uh, also, you know, some, some pretty popular uh, lines there as well. So, Space Marines, Necrons, and Imperial Guard. So, uh, let's see, let's take a look at this here. It's basically a, uh, you know, a large hardcover book, just like normal. Uh, it's very well done, uh, very, very high quality and stuff. I flipped through this a bunch, and it has not... Uh, the pages haven't come uh, come undone or anything like that, so the binding is very, very well done. I think it retails for like seventy dollars U.S. give or take. I'm not sure. I was able to pick one up at Adepticon, so that, that was a uh, that was rather nice, uh, kind of a surprise that they had it there. So I was like, hey, let me let me check that out. I'm not sure if it's uh, been officially released yet. I do not think it has. Uh, it's 227 pages, written by uh, Alan Bly, which is the uh, you know a, a, if you've been following the. Uh, the Horus Heresy series. He's the architect of the uh, the heresy, so to speak, because he seems to be the one writing writing the books as well. So uh, it's a great great author. He's really I don't know where he gets his stuff from. <laughs> He's got a very good imagination, and uh, it's really enjoyable to read. So let's take a look at this. Uh, like I said, it was 226 pages. Let's take a look at the table of contents here. Uh, so as you can see, there's quite quite a bit uh, to be offered in this book. Now each uh, what is it? Each faction has uh, some new special rules for uh, their particular, you know, um, I, what is it, I guess, uh, faction, so to speak. And there's also uh, some reprinting of some older stuff as well, but w what's really neat is, like, say, say for instance, you take a look at the Dark Harvest list here for, for Necrons, you know, you're going to see some new headquarters units, some new troops, some elites, uh, the can Canoptic uh, Tomb Stalker, which has been out for a while. Uh, Fast Attack Heavies, Super Heavy Gauss Pylon, been out for a while. Those were basically like the two, <laughs> the two Necron Forge Roll models that were that were there for so long. So that's kind of neat to see. And then it also fills it in, and I'll show you here in, in a minute as we get to each each army list section. It also fills it in with you know the appropriate things like you know uh, night sights and things like that as well you know so you these are these are basically the new things that might be offered by forge world and then you can always take the normal you know like for minotaur's chapter space marines you can always take normal space marine stuff as well so that, that's that's pretty cool and uh, so basically the book is broken down by you've got your your campaign for uh the the sector then you've got your three army lists the dark harvest minotaur's chapter and death corps and then you go into the Zomortalis uh, appendix, and it's got like a brief Apocalypse Rules appendix for super heavy vehicles, because there are some included in here. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then it's got, you know, some fluff and stuff. So about 40 pages of fluff, then it goes into the, the actual campaign rules themselves, and then you get big chunks at a time of, of each of the factions. So there's some great looking artwork in here. Uh, here's the basically the fluff of the Orpheus uh, sector itself. Uh, some very ominous uh, monuments here that I'm sure will come to life. I, I, I briefly read through the uh, through what was going on in um, yeah, in the the actual fluff for like the conflict and things like that, and a whole whole chapter of, uh, <laughs> of Space Marines got um, martyred and uh, just a whole bunch of crazy stuff. You know, it's basically the worst of the grim dark. You know, all come to fruition in this campaign, so it's, it makes for a great read. Uh, some crazy stuff for the the Death Corps in here too. So here's uh, the Lord uh, Asterion um, Moloch, I guess. Uh, he is the chapter master of the Minotaur. So the Minotaurs are, of course, like the Greco component to the uh, Greco-Roman styling of space marines. You know, normal marines are basically, you know, Roman styled, I guess. Uh, as far as, you know, most notably ultramarines, so to speak, but, you know, you, you never really had a, a, a Greco-Greek chapter kind of look, and obviously Spartans, <laughs> but they're cool to look at, so uh, th there's some really, really cool stuff in here for them. So here's the uh, here's the chapter, uh, the 
campaign special rules section itself, uh, which gets into a lot of campaign rules and different things and scenarios. And then you got some sector maps and the actual fronts themselves, and some of the new releases and some expanded views of things, things like that. And then you got actual there's the missions there. So we get to the army list here, uh, the first one being the Necrons. And like I was saying, you know, it gives you a little bit of fluff, and then it just dives right into the actual army list components themselves. So here's the first HQ you come to in the Necron. Oh, and by the way, each one of these has their, uh, except for, excuse me, except for the Minotaurs, they have their own Warlords table, uh, like a variant. So that's kind of cool. The Minotaurs, uh, depending on who you take, specifically get a certain trait off the, off the normal one from the 6th edition rulebook. So here's your here's your weapon summary, uh, weapons, things like that. There's a couple new, for Necrons, there was a couple new things introduced, uh, new traits, a new piece of war gear called the Flensing Scarabs, which basically give them uh, Fleshbane, I believe, and Mark of the Flare, which is kind of like a random roll on the table, like Chaos Possessed, very similar to that, that you can take. I think there was a thing that also gave things, it will not die. So here's the first HQ you come to, the World Killer. He's pretty good. Uh, it's got two of save. He also comes with uh, a special weapon called the Obs Obsidax, which is definitely from ancient lore. Uh, and it's got an AP2 strength to user. I mean, it's still initiative 2, but that's nothing to sneeze at for uh, the Necron. So there's a whole bunch of, of new Necron entries, and like I was saying too, a in each section, you know, you've got your new stuff that's coming out from Forge World, and then you've got your standard stuff, and it tells you what page in the Necron Codex, which is really nice. So, you know, it's a good supplement if you play any of these. It's a, it's a very good supplement to uh, to your army. Here's the Minotaur section. A little bit of fluff, and then it opens into the actual army list section. And there again is the Chapter Master himself. And like I was saying, he comes with, uh, if you take him, you get a trait. You get a specific trait from, oh shoot, where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, legendary Fighter Warlord, uh, rather than rolling automatically. So, there you go. He's got a couple neat things, a couple neat special rules, 235 points, basic, basically in Terminator armor. So, there's a few things in here. Uh, one of the things I liked was the Rock Pattern Storm Eagle gunship, which has some more powerful missiles. Uh, was the only thing I really saw that was... Oh, the Damocles Command Vehicle, you're probably used to this. This confused a lot of people in the past because it would take the uh, the Apocalypse Cloverleaf, the the thing that looks like a cloverleaf, it would take that and it would give it to you. It was 60 points, it would, you could take that. And people would always take it, and it was 40k friendly. But then tournament organizers were like, yeah, but you don't get the Apocalyptic Barrage because that's, you know, ginormous. So now they've kind of reined it back against the standard orbital bombardment, which I thought was pretty cool. So... Once again, a valid, uh, you know, selection for Space Marines if you got an open HQ slot. Helps you with your reserves. Teleport beacon, uh, the Vox Relay, plus one or minus one to your reserve rolls while it's still alive. And Orbital Bombardment, which is super nice. So then we go into the Death Corps Krieg. And I really like this list. Uh, I, I was reading up on it, and it's a completely um, separate guard list. Let's see if we can get here to the section. There's a whole, there's a whole ton of, sec of of special rules in here. So it's basically called the uh, Death Corps Creeves Assault Brigade Army List. Say that ten times fast. And what it is, it's just basically a standalone Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, you can take it if you take it as your standard force org uh, for the army. You get all sorts of crazy special rules, uh, which is called the, the Forlorn Hope, which I'm sure many of you and uh, that are familiar with. Ancient battles and you know any any battle out there really you're familiar with that term, uh, which gives the Death Corps uh, basically meat grinder. So any unit can come back at full strength from the table edge. I mean it would still count as a kill point if it was a kill point mission. So that's pretty ridiculous. Then you also get something called an assault objective, where you get to put it on the board as a secondary objective after normal objectives are placed, and they just basically have to take it. If they take it, it's worth two victory points it's, instead of the normal one or whatever it may be worth. For the particular mission, which I thought was pretty cool, they got their own orders, which are basically just like the same thing as an Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, they got their, their own trade table they can roll off of, specialized war gear, specialized vehicle war gear, uh, of course, special vehicles. Uh, you know, just all sorts of cool stuff. And I was really, uh, I was really digging this. This here's a special uh, forlorn hope rule. So I was really digging it. 
Um, and if you even look at the HQ, if you take a Death Corps command, Company Command Squad, you get a Fire 4 Effect uh, Bombardment, which was, which was pretty neat. Um, I mean, it's super scatters, but whatever. It's just, it's just more cool stuff. Excuse me, for the Imperial Guard, or for the Imperial Guard Death Corps uh, uh, main standard four sword. So, I thought that was pretty neat. You know, Death Corps definitely full of flavor, and basically Kriegsmarines, you know, from, or I guess not really Kriegsmarines, that was the Navy, but anyways, you kind of get what I'm saying. They got that uh, German World War II styling, and it was just, you know, it's just kind of something neat that's always uh, been, a, been a fan favorite, and it was really nice to see them kind of come into their own in this book that I don't think anybody was really expecting. Uh, a couple of things of note, uh, I was reading through this, it looks like they, they took the rules for the, oh, we need to talk about Quartermaster Cadre. Okay, so, I'm, I, this is the first I've ever read this, and I apologize to Death Corps fans out there, because if, if I didn't pick up on this before, I'm sorry. But, there's basically no medics in the list, it's, it's this thing called the Quartermaster Corps, where basically they go around and... You know, nobody really survives in the Death Corps, because if your, your environmental suit kind of opens up, they always deploy them on, like, the most hazardous world, so you're probably boned anyways. So they just kind of go around, and they pick up the equipment, and, you know, anybody that's kind of just hanging on for life, they just kind of shoot them. Very few people get saved, so <laughs> it's kind of like, here's the Emperor's Mercy, give me your gear. And that's why they're called Quartermasters, because they just kind of go around and gather up the dead's equipment for, you know, re, re uh, distribution. So, <laughs> it was uh, very harsh and very grim dark, but that's why we love the uh, background and the uh, everything there is about this game, I assume. Okay, like I was saying, the Hades Breaching Drill has some new updated rules that you definitely want to take a look at, because they don't quite work the same anymore. It's a little bit unpredictable. Uh, same set of rules that's out of Imperial Armor 2nd Edition, the one that just came out previously. So... Other than that, that wasn't anything too crazy new, but it's really nice to see a lot of these core-specific and uh, forge-rolled kits being able to 40k, you know, have their own have their own list and 40k approved now. So I, I thought that was pretty neat. After that, you get into some Zorm, Zone Mortalis um, campaigns, special rules, missions, things like that. Pretty cool stuff. I have not played it yet, but it looks, you know, there's some catastrophic damage. One of the things is Necrons take out like a kind of a NORAD type mountain bunker thing that had a ton of uh, pro guardsmen in it. So that's kind of what a lot of this came from. Is they got kind of buried alive and trapped and things like that. So it was just kind of kind of a neat read. Uh, the book is definitely worth picking up. Just not only for the rules, but for for just kind of the fluff in the background itself as well. 226 pages. Uh, I kind of liked it better than a lot of the more recent books from them. Uh, not counting Horace Heresy, of course, but you know it's uh, it's uh, they're getting better. They're getting way better. So I can't wait for. Supposedly they're going back and redoing some of the some of the earlier books. So I can't wait for the uh, the Taros campaign, uh, or uh, was the Aphelion project, which was the Tyranids too. So maybe they could uh, definitely go back and revisit those because I'm sure they could use a little 6th edition loving too. So anyways, like I said, uh, this is Imperial Armor uh, Volume 12, The Fall of Orpheus, a good book, definitely worth checking out if you uh, if you are so inclined or playing in these armies or can borrow it from a friend. I'm MBG Rob Bear, thanks for watching my video review of this new great book from Forge World. Spiky Bits!